Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh to some of y'all and peace out to the rest of you. Hit the share button because the message is more important than the messenger. Um, let me give a special shout out to uh, Compassionate and Callous. Um, this is uh, about what he requested. I talked to you in the audience before about um, the sorceresses that confessed. This is not just me talking hocus pocus, but I talked to you about the ones that confessed um, and beautiful lies or El Guapo played their confession on his channel. Shout out to you too, sir. These things are not a joke. Um, the sorceresses, in order for their stuff to work, and they do get results, they have to employ um, spirits. Now, the spirits belong to a particular species, and the species has free will like we do. They're not, um, uh, they're not magical per se, they just, we just don't see them, we don't hear them for the most part. They live in their dimension. Most of them, they have free will like we do, so this means that they have different beliefs. They have different um, wants, wishes, taste, uh, different personalities, different, I did say religions. So there are some of them that are Christian, some of them that are Buddhist, some are Hindu, some are Muslim. They're not forced to believe in any one thing and they're going to be judged on Judgment Day like we are. The thing about the jinn is that they can take on appearances. When the house is haunted, it's not because of the ghost of people that died in the house. It's because of them. When uh, people who survived the loss of a loved one see that loved one as if he or she is alive, sitting on the couch in the house later, and then see it, the apparition disappear. That's not the soul of the loved one uh, that passed away. That is one of these things. Because they have free will and they can come in different types, some of them choose to be demons. These demons are the ones that are really, really responsible for carrying out the worst acts amongst their kind. They coordinate with the worst of people the magicians and sorcerers and sorceresses. Sometimes people do magic tricks that they, well, they call them magic and it's not even magic, they're just illusions, sleight of hand, card tricks, things like this, basic things. Other times they actually do things that are magic. I'm not going to tell you that I'm an expert in what they can and cannot do. I'm going to tell you what I have learned about what they can and cannot do. They can move physical objects. In our dimension, they can move them. They can toss them, throw them, shoot them, tip them over. They can do all of these things. They can affect electronics. I don't think they can sit down at a computer and type out a report for you, but they can affect electronics. They can, um, let's say that when you're driving, um, every single traffic light you come to turns red. And it's because you're in a rush to get somewhere important. It's probably them. They, um, they can cause illusions and they can also whisper directly into the minds of people. And the person will not know the difference between what one of these things is whispered and their own thoughts because they can sound like your own thoughts. And that's a pretty dangerous capacity, but if you know yourself well and you also know well your family members, they can't sound, they can't. Uh, objectively sound to you like or successfully sound to you in your own head like your own thoughts or like something that grandmom would say they can't do that 
I mean, it could probably sound like it, but you wouldn't fall for it. You may not even perceive it. Um, they can travel long distances in a short time. Now, as far as the ability to move physical objects goes, I know what's there. I don't know what the weight limit is and the limits of their dexterity, but I know they can move physical objects. Sometimes you put something important in a location. You come back later, it is not where you put it. You didn't move it and nobody else knew where it was to move it. And sometimes you forgot. Sometimes someone else found it. But other times it wasn't you and it wasn't someone else you can see. It was someone else you cannot see. And they moved it just because they're mischievous. They could be teenagers amongst their kind or it could be actual demons. But they moved it because it was important to you and they were messing with you. It's a joke to them. Because remember, they have free will. The ones of them that are not actually demons can still do things that are pranks. But human beings that are into this sort of thing work with them in, in order to get things. So um, people were doing magic in uh, West Africa in order to get U.S. dollars. But in order to do this, they had to perform very horrible deeds, horrible acts. One... Um, one man, as the story was told to me, one man had to sacrifice kids, but he kept the heads of the kids in a closet and he could go in up to that head and he could withdraw a uh, hundred U.S. dollars at will after he did this. He could pull it out of the mouth of this severed kid's head. That's how the story was told to me. Of course, I never saw anything like that. I've never been to Liberia. I, um, I've heard different stories, but one of the things is that they always seem to follow the same pattern. Something dastardly has to be done in order to get into these circles where people practice this and they hear results or they hear answers when they, uh, or they see answers, one of the two. So understand, nobody stays in this sort of thing if they don't get results. They're getting results. They're absolutely getting results. Another thing, they cannot see into the future. They can plan a future and we don't have the ability to intervene or bust it up, but they can't see the future. In most cases, they cannot directly control a person. Now, sometimes people give them control, those who work closely with them. Other times, uh, some of them may cheat and outright possess a person. Now, they're usually demons, but they're not demons that are employed by the shaitan himself, by Lucifer. Because that's not his goal. His goal isn't to jump into someone, possess them, and make them do all sorts of dastardly deeds so that they can go to hell. He wants people to burn. He wants people to become the enemies of God because he hates human beings in general. But he knows controlling someone and making them do wrong is not how he gets them lost in the eyes of God. He knows that. His goal is to convince people of their own free will to do wrong. That's his goal. And his employees' goals are the same. They focus on things like uh, breaking up husbands and wives. That's one of their main goals. I will now tell you how I know some of these things. When I married my current wife, um, a few days after we were, uh, after I joined her, uh, we went to Dubai. It was my first time going to Dubai. I've only been twice. And this time going to Dubai, we checked into the hotel and she began to talk about how demons go after newly married couples and how their most serious attacks are in the beginning. And she said to me straight up, she said, if you have any dreams about me doing something harmful to you that I wouldn't do, know that that's them that caused the dreams. They'll do that to me too, probably. Funny thing is, I'm her first husband. I knew what she was talking about because I experienced that when I was married the first time. So I knew what she was referring to. She started talking about ways to repel them and to frustrate them in their plans. And this involves reciting some verses of the Quran. And as she said, the names of the verses 
Then she recited the verses so that I would know exactly which ones to which she was referring. And as she recited, an empty bottle of water toppled over on the kitchen counter. The air conditioning was not blowing in that direction. She said, see? I looked over behind, I heard it, I looked behind me and there it was, toppling and rolling over. And she said, see, they were here already trying it. They were here waiting for that. We have to do this frequently and drive them away. And she's been right. She's been correct. And I've recited frequently so as to drive these things away. And I must say, I'm glad I did. It's worked. Um, so, yeah, the recitation of the Quran. And there are certain verses that really get them. Um, that does work. Asking God for protection in addition works. Certain supplications that we say also work. You know, um, as much as they cannot, they cannot overpower God, they can't even overpower any of the angels, and they can't see the future. They can't be in two places at one time. Um... And they can't even, even when some of them decide to cheat and possess people, they can't even, the funny thing is they can't even possess people most of the time. Most people, most jinn cannot possess most people. That's another limit. It's rare. They can move very quickly. They can be, uh, within seconds, they can be in another nation. That's very true. But they can't be in two places at one time. What do you think is behind the phenomena of the psychic? If you find someone that really does seem to be a psychic, what else do you think is behind that phenomena? If somebody seems to be able to fly, what else do you think is behind that? If somebody levitates, what do you think is behind that? As a matter of fact, what do you think is behind the phenomena of white supremacy being so widespread around the world, even amongst black people? What do you think is behind that? See, all of these, th that entire species is not demons. The species is referred to as jinn. It just means that they're invisible. That's all. But the ones of them that decide to become demons, they're still invisible and they have a lot of advantages over people. We don't see them, we don't hear them unless they're whispering directly into our own minds. Um, they can move around quickly and they can do things like they can uh, uh, disclose a secret between two human beings to a third party and then cause the two secret uh, bearers to not trust each other. It's stuff like that. But since they can travel long distances and they hate Adam and they hate human beings for coming from Adam, who else do you think will be behind the phenomenon of white supremacy? You know, this angst that many of us feel when we find out that throughout most of the world, they're just harder on darker skinned people and they don't seem to have to have, they don't need a teacher to teach them this. It just seems to come to them naturally. It gives us a lot of angst. Where the hell did this come from? I don't have that angst because I know where it came from. I know who started that. To me, it's very plain and very simple. Who else has a motive to do that in the first place? This is, these are the things that they can do and the things that they cannot do. Now, there's more that they can do, and there are probably other limits to their abilities that I don't know. But this is what I know so far. Whatever your religion is, if you find that uh, it seems that unseen forces are able to really affect most of your luck and it's for the worse, go ahead and try reciting. Or ask someone to recite for you or play some on your phone and see what happens. Play some verses on the phone. Play some of the supplications on the phone. Go to an imam and ask them. The imam may not be a specialist in this, but they'll know a specialist in the, and the specialist in this are usually called uh, raqayin. That's the plural form. Raqi is the... Uh, the singular form. I know it sounds like I'm talking about a boxing movie, doesn't it?
You have to be careful, though, because they are more numerous than human beings. They've been around since before Adam was created, alayhi salam. And since they have free will, but there's so many of them and they've been around so long, they outnumber us. Even just the bad ones amongst them probably outnumber human beings. We're not the ones who are able to fight them ourselves. We have to call on the one who created them and us to protect us from them. And there are certain verses that um, are more aggressive against the evil ones amongst them than others. So when the demons um, start, because those are the ones that, are, that involve themselves directly with humans, they're supposed to leave us alone. But the ones of them that will directly involve themselves with humans, that will, that will audibly speak back and answer a magician or a sorceress and deliver to them the results they seek. Um, when they start doing these things, you got to have protection. And there's an interview in which a Russian sorceress or magician is talking to an interviewer and she says it is actually difficult to get to the Muslim. She said that the Muslim that actually says his prayers regularly has a dome over him or her. And that which she sends out after them tends to bounce back. Well, what she sends out after them are these demons, not regular run of the mill jinn living their lives in their dimension and in their world, but specifically the ones willing to interfere in human affairs and oppress human beings. Those are the demons. And that's what she's talking about when she says that which she sends after them. It's them. It bounces. They have a protection around them. It doesn't work. They may decide to go and try to affect your computer because it's important to you. And then they just can't. Or if they try to mess with your memory of certain things, cause you to forget things that you need or remember things incorrectly. And they can't. And they can't even get close to you. When I performed Hajj, these things retaliated against me. When they couldn't get to me during the Hajj time, they went after somebody else. He told me about it. I sent to him a link to play the verses that are specifically about fire and burning. And, and, and this is, uh, it's an aggressive one. It was recited by uh, a reciter named Khalid al-Habashi. That's his name. He played it. He's a relative of mine back on the Gulf Coast. He played it. First time, his phone turned itself off. But he turned it on, played it again. And this time, he let it, and it kept on playing. And then he was later on, he fell asleep. And he was later on awakened by somebody screaming in the house in serious pain. So he got up and went around to see was it, uh, who was it in the house that burned themselves. He wasn't, there was nobody in the house with him. He was by himself. One of these things had approached the house to get to him and they got, and it got burned and, and in serious pain it screamed as it retreated or it died. One of the two. And I selected this specific Rukia to send to him as a link just because it was designed to kill these things. Not just fight them, repel them, but to kill them. They must either retreat or die. And he heard one screaming. It sounded to him like it was someone that was physically in the house. He thought it was somebody that, that lives in that house with him and found out it, everybody else had left. Which is probably why one of these things felt comfortable approaching the house to come for him. They are real, but the protections are also real. White supremacy is real, but these things are behind the spread of white supremacy, and they're trying to cause the illusion amongst people that that uh, uh, to be anti-black is natural and normal for the human species. Who else would have a motive to convince an entire species that its most original strain is the most inferior? Who else would do that? It must be the demons. It must be the Satan himself, because he's upset. If you ever want to know why it is that, that uh, there was an argument between uh, Satan and God in the first place, it's largely because Satan was never an angel. He was with them. He was around them. He was allowed to live where they live. 
but he was never an angel. He always had free will. And when the command came for them to show respect to Adam before Adam was even brought to life, peace to him. He refused because he had free will and he had a sense of arrogance and pride. He said, I was created from fire. And he even said this to God. He said, God, you created me from fire and created him from clay. I'm better than him. That's why I disobeyed you when you told everyone to show him some respect. And Allah kicked him out of where he was living. That's what happened. Now, he was the first one to discriminate Satan. Now, because he still hates the species due to his hatred of Adam and therefore his hatred of Eve and everyone else that comes out of Adam, he is trying to convince this species to hate its most original form. And then if they were to turn on us and wipe us out, he would then convince them to hate the next most original looking form and then the next most original looking form because he hates the species, period. He doesn't love human beings at all. This is why the human beings that practice magic and decide to go into this must go through an initiation in which they are completely dehumanized and debased. And they do it to themselves because these things, these demons that are working for Lucifer himself also hate human beings and they insist on this as a way to get in. You not only have to reject Islam, you have to, to um, dehumanize yourself. You have to reject the dignity that God gave to the human being. That's why. I don't even know what all of these, these initiations are because there's so many of them. Because magicians even come in different types. Different circles, different groups, different focuses. But every time I've asked people about these things from different cultures, it's always been the same. There's always some real nasty taboo thing that, it, that you have to do that's required. And if you don't do it, you can't get in. Skinwalkers are not benevolent and benign. You've heard the legends of skinwalkers in North America. They're not benevolent and benign. Not at all. Skinwalkers are always, uh, it, it, it always involves having to do something very nasty and, and, and just something against even human instinct not just a sin but it's a human weakness for that sin no it has to be a sin for which human beings don't even have in their nature to, to carry out you can't just fornicate because that's a human weakness for adults that are healthy if especially if they're not married no you can't do that it's got to be something worse something that goes against your own nature and is evil they insist on that this is something that always is there when you ask the original Americans about this. You ask people from the motherland about what the hell it takes. It's the same thing. That being said, um, the main thing for us to focus on is the protection that is available to us from them and their influences. There are people who know more about this subject than I do. Feel free to contact them as well. But in the meantime, focus, especially those of you that are Muslim, Muslim and you're listening. In the meantime, focus on uh, what it is uh, that we have to protect ourselves because Ramadan is already over here. And the leaders amongst them have already been let loose here. But remember, they can travel great distances in a short time. It's one of the, their abilities. They don't have unlimited power, not even over us, but they just have the advantages of speed, invisibility, and auto, uh, well, let's say speed and undetectability and information that they share with each other. <laughs> That's really all they've got. It's nothing else. Stealth and speed. But, what, but the abilities that they do have, they always capitalize on it and they're not lazy and they don't quit. The ones that are working against human beings don't give up. They don't quit. You protect yourself. You seek the protection and they wait until it's over and they come back and try again. So you have to stay seeking protection.
and you got this you have to keep your nose clean we have to keep our noses clean we have to stay seeking protection because if i slip up or if i forget they'll come after me too and i'm sure they're waiting i'm sure some of them are going to try something um within the next week they absolutely will They're going to do it again and again and again because that's who they are and that's how they are. I hope that what I've said helps you. And if, if you go and you seek the imams near you and ask them about the experts they know to get even more information, it, it will help you. It absolutely will help you. And one of the reasons why I was willing to do this, and I want those of you who benefit from this, to go back and thank Compassionate and Callous for this. Thank him for it. Because he facilitated me being able to do this. But the other thing too is that I wish that I had talked about this before because frankly, when I became Muslim, there were two things I needed to know the most. Two things. I, I saw how Islam could be a solution for black folks as long as it was more than a theory to us. But I wanted to know what was the reason for the discrimination against us as a race, I mean. And I also needed to know what these things were and what they could do and couldn't do and what they had a motive to do. And come, come to find out that these, the answer to them was both. It was, the answers to them were the same answer. One answer for both of these things. The hatred of Adam. Not ours. But the demons' hatred of Adam. Not the jinn's hatred of Adam. But the demons' hatred of Adam was the reason for both. We're not superior. We're not inferior genetically. We wind up becoming superior mainly because other groups are willing to discriminate against us. So they give us their good deeds and make themselves inferior by virtue of that alone itself. But um, the demons actually hate Adam and therefore they hate human beings, but they hate us because we still visibly remind them of Adam. And this is one of the reasons why it is that human beings go hardest on the darkest. And they even got us doing that. So to be honest with you, racism is their religion. They started this. It's funny because they're not human. They don't come in human races. They're their own species. They've got their own varieties within. But, eat, but yet and still, racism between human beings is actually a demonic faith. It is a demonic, it's, it is the religion that Iblis followed, that Lucifer followed when he argued with, first when he disobeyed God, then argued with God when God questioned him about it. He was following another religion. And what was that? Discrimination. For something that was involuntary and the fault of no one. And so they, when human beings became diverse, he was able to go ahead and start that. And it worked because look how many people are willing to do this. Look how many people are willing to discriminate against uh, their most original, their own most original form. Stop and think about that. How normal is that? It's not normal. If it was, people wouldn't do it. If it was normal, they wouldn't sit up here and promote this sort of thing. To get the human species to hate its own most original race, its race of origin, is right up, it is right up his alley. It is his motive and nobody else has the capacity to spread certain ideas amongst human beings that didn't meet each other so easily and so quickly. But then because we know it's not in human nature. Some say, no, it is in human nature. Look at babies. Babies actually tend to respond to different people based on the proximity to their parents, not just the proximity of appearance, but also proximity of familiarity. See, babies don't just look at who resembles their parents the most closely and, and, and feel the most comfortable with them. They also look at who resembles the parents, friends the most closely, how their parents react. 
So if you take a Caucasian baby, but that Caucasian baby's parents have friends from different uh, varieties, that baby does not have it in them to discriminate based on appearance. Because they've seen such folks around their parents and being good to their parents. That's actually what's in people's nature. But Shaitan's able to go ahead and deceive a lot of people into thinking that, oh, it's in, it, it's, it's in your nature to discriminate against the darkest, blackest, whitest, nosed, biggest, lipped human beings on the planet. No, he gets to con he's able to convince people of that because they don't know about the demons. They don't know our enemy. Who you think is behind feminism? You don't believe me? Feminism is actually controlled by inner circle. Hybrid Vigor has the receipts on this. That's a YouTuber out of Canada. He's got the receipts on this. He knows. Feminism is controlled by inner circle of women that are not even interested in men but in other women. However, the women in whom they're interested are feminine women that themselves are interested in men. So feminism was a way for them to try to go through all, take women through all these mental changes so that feminine women would be more available to these women that don't even like men. to a certain extent that has backfired has had a lot of damaging effects but it has not done what they want but amongst this inner circle of women there have been offshoots and some of them have become anti-natalists they are against birth Cynthia G got her talking point from them getting rid of uh, uh, black male babies in the womb was something she took from them she applied she added black to it others of them had already said well look if you you know don't carry don't conceive don't deliver but if you're going to then don't deliver males yeah they said this does this sound like something that is in human interest at all who would put this in the minds of a human being in the first place bacteria multiply you can't give them an interest in not multiplying bacteria with no sentience how are you going to sit up and take human beings and get them interested in no more multiplication of people unless it is because, well, there's one reason I could think of that a religious God-fearing person might be interested in that and they don't even think this way. So this means that it's got to come from another source. It's not going to come from human interest. So what, where does that leave us? You see where I'm going with this? People underestimate the enemy of human beings in general and thus become more easily deceived. I wish I could say otherwise, I really do. And I mean that from the bottom of my black heart and from the depths of my black mind. In any case, my people, Thank you for listening. Um, I want you all to be careful. I don't want you to underestimate either of our enemies. I don't want any of us to fall into two extremes. One extreme is to attribute God-like and, and God-specific and God-unique abilities to our enemies. And I don't want overestimating them. And I don't want us to underestimate our foes and opponents either thinking that they can't do anything and will not do anything. Christians oftentimes make the mistake of thinking that the devil is always weak. No, the plots and plans are weak if you're seeking refuge. But they make the mistake of underestimating the devil and then the devil gets what he's looking for. So with that being said, I want you to uh, Avoid these two extremes. Look into more yourself and come back in the comments and share any extra information with me and with my readers. Because in all honesty, what the hell else do you think would make the grandchild attack its own grandparents so viciously and so vehemently? The way that the Europeans have gone across the globe and tried it and attacked everyone else and the way everybody else has been on a moment's notice willing to jump down our throats when we've done nothing to them while forgiving their own grandkids, the Europeans, for colonizing them and doing worse. 
This is the deepest rabbit hole, period. This is deeper than every other rabbit hole down which we can go. You all can hear the call to prayer in the background, so I got to go, obviously. I really hope this benefits you. And if you go and you look further into this and you share the information that you find out with others, as long as it's a valid source somewhere, then hey, you know what? It did benefit you. And I really hope that you benefit others with this. As always, thank you for listening. And this time I want you to also to give uh, thanks to Compassionate and Callous as well. Black heart, black mind, black out, assalamu alaikum, and black heterosexual non-select male power just because the feminists and the misandrists don't like it. And the racists don't like it. Thank you again for flying with me on Jet Black Airways, where jet black is also a verb. Keep jetting black with me until the wings and the wheels fall off. Gender justice forever. God's justice is forever.